Hello and welcome back to part two of my mini masterpieces here at Perky Penny Paper Arts. If you missed part one, there is a link in the description below, so you be sure to check it out after you've finished watching this video. The main ingredients for these cards are the super cute Santa Town 6x6 paper pad, doodle pops, stickers and embellishments from Doodlebug Designs, and these card sketches that I have created that I'm sharing on my blog. In most instances, the sketches have the measurements for both the mini size and the standard size cards, so it will be a great reference for you to have. Our first card today is this adorable little pop-up card. I have a 3 inch by 6 inch piece of the card for the card base, another 2 and a quarter by 2 inch piece with these little trees, and some white cardstock in 1 inch by 2 inch, two and a half by one and three quarters, and two and a half by two and a quarter. I score, fold, and crease the card base, then use my corner chomper to round the bottom two corners on my card base, the one inch by two inch strip, and the two and a quarter by, or I'm sorry, two and a half by two and a quarter inch panel. I layer the pieces by using the two and a half by two and a quarter inch panel as a mat for the two and a quarter inch by two inch piece of paper um, that has the trees on it and attaching them to the front of the card. I used the sticker sheet to decorate the first card of these I made, but this time I decided to try these little house doodle pops. I started by adding one to the front of the card and then finishing the front off with the Merry Christmas cut from one of the patterned papers. I used the two and a half inch by one and three quarter inch piece of cardstock for the pop-up mechanism by scoring it on the two and a half inch side at a half inch, one inch, one and a half inches, and two inches. Folding, scoring, increasing all score lines, applying a strip of score tape to one of the end sections, and attaching the end of the adhesive with the adhesive to the opposite end to create this little square tube. To attach it to the card, I smush it flat on two of the creases and then apply score tape to both sections. I then carefully lined up the center between these two taped sections with the crease on the card base and press down and then carefully close the card so the other half adheres to the top of the card. And then I apply the one inch by two inch strip to the center of my card. And add a snowflake sprinkle shape for a little shine. I added one of the little houses up on the top of the pop-up element off center to the left and then took a small scrap of acetate, folded it in half and applied adhesive to both sides. One side I attached to the back of the little house, and the other I applied to the card, making sure there was nothing in the way of the little house folding down properly. I recently did an entire pop-up skating scene using this technique that I'll link to up on the right corner. To complete this card, I took one of the little cut-aparts from the pattern papers and attached it to the front of the pop-up mechanism with some adhesive. This next card is a mini simplified version of a classic double gate fold card made out of a three inch by six inch piece of pattern paper and created in just five easy steps. One, score at one inch, two inches, four inches and five inches on the six inch side. Two, measure and mark the left and right side half inch from the bottom using a pencil. Three, using your paper trimmer, cut between the top of the two inch score line to the half inch mark and on the left side from the top of the four inch score line to the half inch mark on the right. Four, fold the two inside score lines towards the opposite side and crease and then fold over each of the outside score lines to their corresponding edge to expose the other pattern. And five, decorate. I used another one of the Merry Christmases from that strip from the pattern paper and one of these little doodle pop snowmen. Super cute. And don't forget to erase your pencil lines. This little matchbook card is completely new to me. It looked fun, so I decided to give it a try. I took a three inch by six inch piece of pattern paper, making sure that the patterns are parallel to the three inch side and placed it in the scoreboard and scored the six inch side at two inches, two and one eighth inches, and four and three quarter inches. I folded and creased all of the score lines into a matchbook shape. 
I then took the small flap at the other end, it was about an inch and a quarter, that creates the bottom of the matchbook, folded it, and then stapled it to the inside of the card about a half an inch up in the center to create a secure flap to hold the card closed when it's folded. I decorated the card with a little strip of Santa and his reindeer, the leftover punch from the shadow box in the last card, and a cut apart, all from the paper pad. Some of the stickers and two and three quarters by one and a quarter inch piece of white cardstock attached in the center for a message. And another card is done. I think these next two are probably my favorite cards of all 11 cards I created for these videos. We're going to make a cute little shaker card and a pop-up card. Oh, I'm sorry. We just made a pop-up card. A pop-up box card. Let's start with the shaker card. This card was made very simply because of the My Favorite Things shaker dies and frames in their coordinating pouches. These are such great tools to make quick and easy shaker cards. Other companies make similar products, but what makes these special is the low profile they have. No bulky shaker card with these whatsoever. And they come in a great variety of shapes and sizes. Using the die from the rectangle shaker die and frame set, I have pre-cut the space for the pouch out of the center of a 3 inch square of patterned paper and use this piece to center and attach one of the cut aparts to the front of a 3 inch square of white cardstock. I lay this down and after applying an eighth of an inch score tape around the underside of the rectangle pouch, I create a small arrangement of sequins and seed beads on the center of the picture. I do this on my scoreboard so that I can catch the runaways to save for later. I remove the backing strip from the score tape and gently apply the shaker pouch over my little pile of bling. That's Daisy over there. That was the hard part. To finish this card, I used score tape to attach the pattern three inch square to the front of the card. You can use any type of adhesive for this really. I rounded the corners and added this pretty frame from the coordinating die to finish off the look. Isn't this so much fun? And if that wasn't fun enough, now check out this little cutie. And yes, again, I used a three inch by six inch piece of pattern paper. I scored it at one and a half inches on the three inch side and then turned the paper to score one and a quarter inches, two and a half inches, three and three quarter inches, and five inches on the six inch side. To make the fold away flaps on the top of the card, I creased the paper in half on the three inch score line and used my scissors to cut each of the score lines on the six inch side to the center score line. I removed the top of the small end flap that will be used to make our box. Now we need a place to add our little scene. I took two two inch by quarter inch strips and attached them to the box. I scored and folded each of the strips at a quarter inch on one side applied adhesive to that quarter inch section and attached them next to each other on the card on what would become the left side of the box when it's, when it's open. I attached them to the other side one at a time, starting with the strip towards the back. I moved the front strip over to the left and out of the way and then applied a small amount of adhesive to the quarter inch, to the end quarter inch of the back strip. I then closed to the other side of the card over onto the adhesive and pressed for a second and then picked up the card and then opened it up carefully to reveal the attached strip. If the strip was pulling away, I repeated the process until it was fully attached. I repeated this process with the front piece and then applied glue to the one inch, one inch, the half inch flap and attached the box together. I folded the box to the left and right until everything seemed to be in place. To attach my little characters, I take a scrap of paper like I have right here and then attach it to the back of the sticker, trimming off the extra so that it won't stick out under the card. I then place the character so that the sticker is on the front and the scrap is behind the center strip. This gives a little bit of extra support. I then deactivate the sticker with the talc powder and repeat this process until the decorating is done. I added a one and a quarter inch by two and three quarter inch piece of white cardstock to the back for a message. This last card is just a quick, super easy gift card holder 
using the same 3 inch by 6 inch piece of pattern paper that so many of these cards were created from. Well, not exactly the same, but you know what I mean. <laughs> same measurements. Something quick for that last minute gift, or if you need to pit make a large quantity quickly. Simply take a 3 inch by 6 inch piece of pattern paper, score it at 3 inches on the 6 inch side, and fold and crease in half. Open it up and place a strip of 8 inch score tape on the very edge of the left and right of, the, of one side perpendicular to the fold and press both sides together. I used my stickers to add some friends to the top of the pocket, making sure to deactivate the exposed sticky part with talc powder. I added some cut aparts to the front and back for some extra fun as well. This isn't necessary though. I think this took me about two minutes to make. Not bad for two minutes work, huh? And there you have it, 11 adorable mini masterpieces. I have added eyelets and will be using them as gift tags and some of them as ornaments on my Christmas tree. They're the perfect size. And they'll also be great on my holiday table as place card holders. Can you think of any other ways you would use them? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you again for spending some time with me today. I hope you're inspired to try making some of these mini cards. Don't forget, all of the measurements are available on my blog, which is linked in the description below. If you like this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe and click the notifications button so you don't miss any future videos.